Okay, so hooking up the video signal. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Whoa! Okay. Okay, so what are we reading on pin 12 of the PAL? Pin 12 of the PAL between 1.06 and 1.72 volts. Okay, so that's some sort of IO labeled output pin, and that is TTL No Man's Land. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the pin out of the socket and see if we get a decent TTL signal. Okay, this is very different. Now we're reading a logic low signal on pin 12 instead of that weird middle zone. So with this pin here lifted, this IO pin here, this IO bar signal now reads a solid low, which presumably is meant to enable this chip here. Well, that's really interesting. That suggests to me that this 74LS139 is bad and it's not allowing the PAL to pull it all the way low. So maybe the PAL is okay. And actually, while I have that pin bent up, let's measure the input to the multiplexer, this enable input, see what that looks like with the pin here lifted. So see just what it looks like if it's floating. So this is what the input looks like when it's just floating, which is what it looked like when it's hooked up. So let me check to make sure there's continuity between pin one of U15 and pin 12 of the PLA. Okay, so when I lift this pin, this is showing a low signal on this pin 12, this thing labeled IO bar on the schematic. And when I include it in the circuit, then I see what I naturally see when pin one here is floating, which is like this one to 1.5 volt TTL no man's land. So I suspect this chip is actually dodgy. Tap it again. This one, U15. This is a multiplexer kind of chip or DMUX something, 74LS139. Do I have one of these in my office? Okay, this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, we wound up lifting one of the pads here. So what I did is I lifted the pin here and lifted the pin here and just made this little jank temporary connection. We can solder up something more permanent. Basically, each of these pins only connects to the other, so I didn't have to go to the back of the PCB. We'll see what happens here. I will say we looked at the IO pin here on the PAL, on the PLD, on the PLA, I forget what it's called. Anyway, whatever this chip is, the one that goes bad all the time, there's now a signal on it where we never had a signal before. But it looks like the PLA wasn't bad. The multiplexer was bad and was pulling the signal. But this isn't the original PLA. When I was bending this pin on the original PLA, I busted it. So that's also embarrassing. Anyway, we ordered this replacement off eBay. But I will note that this looks like it had been socketed and replaced once already. Same thing with the uh, CPU. Okay, so hooking up the video signal. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Whoa! Okay. Oh, look at how that. How much basic bytes do we have free? Commodore 64 Basic V2. We got a 64K RAM system with 38,911 basic bytes free. Yeah. Ready! Okay, disconnecting video. That worked. That worked really well. Here, Dad, um, look at the look at the CRT so that you yeah your reflection. I'm recording your reflection. Mm, uh... <laughs> yeah, this is my first time actually using the C64. I know, yeah. It's funny. So this is the RF output. So it's coming from this guy here. Um, Earlier, yeah. we were connecting over here in a fairly janky way. We could solder up our own connector for this. I have the appropriate thing, but I think I'm just going to be lazy and order one off eBay. Yep, it works. Oh, um, yep, it works. So quick question, Dad. Uh-huh. So this is very similar to AppleSoft Basic and TRS-80 Basic. Are they like the same kinds of Basic? Uh, very similar. They all influenced each other. So my son soldered in a permanent badge wire. For authenticity, I put the RF shield back on. It looks like the cardboard is not 
perfectly cut to the aluminum here or whatever that's made out of. I'm not going to bother soldering anything back in. I just bent the little tabs back over. Okay, and just to make sure I didn't short anything in the back when getting the heat shield back on and the cardboard's in the right spot, this is still working.